Hello, I'm Mark Rogers with Hillcrest Farms. We're milking 340 cows with five dealer valve robots on 850 acres in Deering, Georgia. We have a freestyle barn, which is a typical Georgia, Florida type building that we house cows in here. Everything is built to dissipate heat. When we first started in a freestyle barn 10, 15 years ago, we were told that we could not get the production of Wisconsin, of Minnesota but we ran over uh, 32,000 herd average for several years. Just shows that with proper cooling, with the right diet, you can have high production in the South. And that high production makes you more efficient with the carbon sequestering that you're doing because we're getting more product from less animals. All the flush water, any water we cool cows with, all the water from the robots, everything goes into the same system. Everything is there, goes down with the manure. We use a lot of water when we flush. You know, we send about a four inch wall of water down each lane for about a minute, minute, 15 seconds. That water's gonna be coming down. So we're using that water, but that's all recycled water. We capture all the nutrients, all the manure on the farm. When we're flushing like this, it goes to the end. And the first step, we slow the slope down when it turns. By turning it and by engineering it with less slope, sand's heavy, it falls out immediately. We travel on down a 150 foot lane. At the end of it, it goes into one of two cells. And we actually upcycled used guardrail um, from the interstate system and basically built a giant colander for manure. So just like a spaghetti colander, the water drains out a weir wall through these guardrails and uh, goes in a pipe and goes back in a pond. We actually have two ponds it goes into the first pond, it settles, and then it goes to the second pond. Now the first pond, about every three years, we're gonna need to pump it down and probably haul some sludge out of the bottom onto the fields. The last pond tends to stay a lot cleaner. From there, the only moving part is the pump at the end, and there's a pump that can pump it back up to the two water towers at the upper end to flush the barn again. Most of the solid manures we haul to fields, we take it to all the other crop land, whether it's corn land, where we grow small grains and that kind of stuff. Uh, we have plenty of land to spread that on. We actually capture all the roof water off every building on the farm through a system of gutters, concrete gutters, and culverts in the ground. And we can either add it to the wastewater system when we need additional irrigation water or to dilute the system down a little bit, or we can just let that water go straight out onto grasslands to water that pasture. Well, we were able to convert a good bit of cow pasture into cropland. And that was important because we needed places to spread our wastewater from our closed loop system. So here, if they were out on pasture, of course they're gonna manure wherever they want to. So with them in this facility, there's no way for the manure to go anywhere that we do not want to take it. And then we put it out based on a conservation nutrient management program. We spread the correct rates on the correct fields to fit that field's needs to get the maximum crop production. We are constantly growing something, so we're sequestering carbon. We triple crop land. So it gives us an opportunity to have a crop sequestering year round. The 11th of August, I planted this field, which was 42 days ago. So in 42 days, we have got this much growth out of some sorghum. So we're growing three crops. When we cut the sorghum off, probably the next day, I will go back and drill uh, no-till, some ryegrass and oats back into this land. So we're constantly growing something 365 days a year on this field. We try not to do any more tillage than we have to. I will make one pass with a sprayer, make one pass with a strip till planter rig, and I'm done. So I'm using a lot less fossil fuel to plant this crop than my father did 50 years ago. This is our silage pit. We put a layer of oxygen barrier on top of it, and then on top of that oxygen barrier, we'll put a black and white plastic to help seal it. And on top of that, we put a pest barrier to keep um, crows and other birds from pecking through the plastic to get to the corn grains. It can actually last multiple years underneath this plastic uh, the way we have it sealed, and we can feed it this year, next year, or even the year after, and still be really good, high-quality feed for our cows. It's almost never that we have any product that we need to fork off and not feed to our cows, because when we uncover it, once again, it's, it, it looks good all the way across. 
We're always looking for the next opportunity at Hillcrest. Me and Andy have always had that attitude. We never thought we wanted to be second at anything. And I'm not saying we're the best at anything, but we're trying. We've got that goal. We love our closed loop system. It's very sustainable over the long term. We're using our manure to grow our plants that feed our cows. And then the cows produce more manure that goes back into the system that starts the whole cycle over. So everything here, like I said, with this closed loop system is highly sustainable.